why he is so important is that he's just a good role model, a good person to, you can, you, as a parent, you can be like, look at Tony Hawk, you know, he's a good businessman, he's cool, he's Tony Hawk, you know, I mean, whatever. And, you know, so it's somebody that you can look up to. Um, and, and then he just so happens to be one of the best skateboarders of all time. You know, so it's, it's the perfect package of, of an ambassador for skateboarding. A lot of them came to me because I just wanted to combine existing tricks and you know how could you do this spin while maneuvering your board or um, I just always like breaking the ground I mean that's that's what's always driven me through skating is, is being able to keep pushing the limits and keep challenging myself it up not long after that because I also surfed and I kind of knew the stance and the and the um, balance and and I just started doing it um, with my friends that's that's really how it all began Uh, skating culture is um, very artistic. It's uh, very much um, a lifestyle in terms of the music, the fashion, the act, the act of skating, and um, I think it's very welcoming of all types of people. Well, there's, there's a bunch of things that makes Riley Park uh, special. Tony Hawk and Birdhouse team coming through for a demo. They're gonna try to find the best skate parks that they possibly can. Riley Park has stuff that will challenge a beginner or a pro, like Tony Hawk level. So, um, you know, that's, that's one of the reasons why they would choose to go to Riley Park. Tony Hawk's team is Birdhouse Skateboards, and um, every skateboard company has like a team of, of of skaters that would represent them. And some of them are amateur, and some of them are pro. So all these pros that were here with, um, you know, with the Birdhouse team, and and the skaters that were that were rep representing Birdhouse are um, all in their own right, you know, huge guys in the skateboard community right now. I mean. Uh, on covers of magazines and um, in videos and, and stuff like that, so kids really look up to them, for sure. You know, 
know, a lot of kids, like nowadays, they choose to skate or maybe ride BMX or whatever, and, and they don't have much support for it, and they're largely discouraged from it. And that's, you know, that, that's the exact opposite of what we're trying to accomplish. We want them to, to know that they are supported in doing that. The, the 900 trick I was trying for years and years was, you know, the progression of, of a spinning maneuver. I had done 720s back when I, in like when I was about 17 years old, and I always had that in the back of my mind that, oh, there's, you know, another half spin is a 900, and mm -hmm. finally got the nerve to try it, and tried and failed for about five years until finally uh, I made one at the X Games Best Trick event. Never before in history competition have we seen a 900. Nine, nine, nine. Doing the 900 when he did, like on national TV in the X Games, when everybody's watching, and then it's on ESPN, and it's on Sports Center, huge. Are you kidding me? Just a big sense of relief. I didn't really think that I was like creating a you know a, a big movement or anything. I was just happy to finally get it done. The biggest star in whatever sport do the craziest thing that's never been done on the biggest stage of the sport in front of everybody. So just all those stars align and then like it, it gives skateboarding that exposure and that like little push um, to its next step of mainstream ex you know acceptance. Skateboards and construction hasn't changed much, haven't changed much in the last 10, 15 years. Um, but definitely the um, the way that they're shaped, the way that they maneuver, is, is changing because people are are figuring out new ways to use them. Uh, yeah, the foundation, my foundation is uh, we support public skate parks in low-income areas. We try to help fund and give resources to communities that want to get parks going in their areas. And we focus more on low-income places, more at inner cities, at-risk youth. And um, we've been going about 12 years and helped to fund over 500 parks so far and given away over $5 million and it's going really well.
know, there's so much more support. There's more, so many more facilities now that I, I, I can't even determine what's going to be happening. You know, and and the rate of of uh, improvement is is happening much faster than it ever has. You know, like people have done 1080s now, and um, there was a large gap between spinning moves before, and now it's it's because there's just much more opportunity. All right. Well, that was all my questions. So thank okay. you again. Okay. I think that skateboarding will always have the element of the counterculture and subculture that it has, but I just see it getting bigger and more mainstream. You know, I just think it'll grow and and um, hopefully still kind of maintain its identity. It's all about what you truly enjoy and believing in yourself, you know, and if you find something, if it's skateboarding, if it's something else, and you find your passion, then you've got to stick with it, you know, and, and people will tell you that, they'll tell you all kinds of things. I mean, I got told not to skate for years and years and that it was lame and it was, there's no future in it, and, and I never really cared about that because I just loved doing it. Everybody's telling me I don't fit in. My jeans are too tight and my eyeliner's thick Sitting in the corner in the high school gym I can't even get picked on by the rich kids But one day I'll